Starlink internet service on your phone. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it, clean, refreshing. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a Starlink day. This is an interesting one. We are now seeing Starlink coming to your phone. We're going to be able to use Starlink internet service on our phone, most likely while we're outside. I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to do it inside as of yet, but that's something we're going to get into. The FCC is approving on things and we're gonna talk about them today. I was reading a couple of articles, one over on RS Technica as well as CNBC, and they talk about this. And I think that it's very interesting. As you can see, today is a little bit different. We're not in the studio. We are away for a couple of days, but I don't want to not give you coverage for a couple of days. So we're here on location doing something really quick for you and I hope you appreciate it. If you do, as I always say, throw the video a thumbs up. That will be helpful. Also subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you have, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want more Starlink coverage, I put together a Starlink playlist for you. There's about, 130, I believe, Starlink videos, specifically to Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And as I always say, most importantly, why? If you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here that you can click. YouTube provided that, thank you YouTube, we appreciate that. Click on that if you like, if not, that's all right. Also, consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So anyways, guys, I put together a few notes here on my laptop. I wanna give you not only the articles, but also my commentary on this. I'm gonna start out with the CNBC report and then move into the RS Technica because the RS Technica kind of brings it all together as far as what is going on as of right now. And we can see the path, let's say, that they're taking. So CNBC reports this. SpaceX executive Jonathan Hoffeller VP of Enterprise Sales said that they have plans to begin testing its Starlink satellite to sell service with T-Mobile this year. On a panel at the Satellite 2023 conference in Washington, D.C., Hoffeller said, quote, we're going to learn a lot by doing, not necessarily by overanalyzing and getting out there. So basically, they're gonna end up just doing it and not just analyzing it and figuring out if it's gonna work, is it not gonna work, they're just going to do it. And sometimes that's just the best way to do things. They continue by saying, the market for space-based data service direct to devices on the ground, such as smartphones, is widely considered to have a lucrative potential with various satellite companies partnering with terrestrial mobile network operators, or MNOs, and device makers to fill in coverage gaps across the Earth. SpaceX and T-Mobile announced their partnership in August of last year, vowing to end mobile dead zones, in quote, end mobile dead zones. That was the whole idea. I remember watching that and it was very interesting. The two CEOs were going back and forth, almost like at a panel, they were talking to the audience and letting them know that, listen, we are going to now be able to give coverage to anywhere on the planet. It doesn't matter where you are. So if T-Mobile doesn't have a tower near you, it's okay. If you have T-Mobile service, you'll be able to use SpaceX Starlink. So that is quite amazing, quite amazing. Not only for emergency services, but just for service in general, to be able to have access anywhere, anytime, 24 hours a day. Very cool. SpaceX has launched about 4,000 Starlink satellites to date and recently rolled out its more powerful V2 or version two mini satellites, which it says have quadrupled the capacity of its previous generation. And that we did a report on a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even last week, how these new versions or the version two that is out there will have quadruple the amount of capacity. So that's gonna help a lot with not only the waiting list problem where people cannot get access, but most likely also will probably help with congestion four times the capacity, that is a lot. So Hoffeller said on Monday that SpaceX is manufacturing six satellites per day at its facility near Seattle and believes the company is no longer manufacturing its 1.5 series of SpaceX Starlink satellites. He says the company is also producing thousands of user terminals daily. That is a lot, thousands of terminals daily and 
version 2.0 minis are in production in comparison to even the 1.5s. So they are actually just moving away from the 1.5s. That to me means, guys, that they're gonna be launching a lot more of these 2.0 minis in the future. They're not gonna be launching these 1.5s besides the ones they already have in inventory. That's really good because once again, those 2.0s have quadrupled the amount of capacity. That's great. While SpaceX plans to make even larger second generation satellites, it has made a few so far. Hoffeller emphasized that launching those is tied very closely to Starship, the company's towering rocket that has yet to reach space. That is absolutely the case. Once the Starship is online and it's able to take the full size version twos into space, I think that's when things are really going to ramp up for SpaceX Starlink. Mark my words on that one. SpaceX has well over 1 million Starlink users, Hoffeller said, having passed that milestone in December. Over 1 million as of December, that is a lot. The company recently announced that SpaceX has over 1 million Starlink users, Hoffeller said, having passed that milestone in December. You remember that, I reported on that, over a million. That is a lot in a very short period of time. The company recently announced that the Starlink business, quote, had a cash flow positive quarter in 2022. That is very big, folks, why? Not only is it big because, of course, they're going to be profitable and they're gonna be able to put more and more satellites up there into LEO or low Earth orbit, which will help us all that currently have SpaceX Starlink, right? But what's going to also happen is once we see this profitability, as Elon has said last year, I think first or second quarter, he tweeted out alluding to an IPO for SpaceX Starlink very soon. But soon meaning once it becomes profitable. And that might be the key time. We might be able to see by the end of 2023 an IPO for Starlink. That'd be amazing, guys, that would be amazing. Now, would I be involved in that IPO? I'd probably be buying some shares. That's my personal opinion. I don't tell you what to do with your money, but I do think Starlink is the future. A lot of people don't know it, they don't see it. They don't see the possibilities of it, and I do. So. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and I'm probably gonna invest in the IPO. Anyways, let's move into the RS Technica report, which I think is very interesting because this kind of solidifies things a little bit. In a vote four to zero, that's unanimous vote, the FCC yesterday proposed, quote, a new regulatory framework designed to help satellite operators and wireless companies, quote, leverage the growth in space-based service to connect smartphone users in remote, unserved and underserved areas. Once again, being able to use, for example, T-Mobile, if there is not a tower in the area and you're like on the North Pole someplace, as long as there is a SpaceX Starlink satellite flying overhead, you're going to be able to make a call or text or any type of emergency service through that device. That is just incredible to me, absolutely incredible. In August, 2022, Starlink operator SpaceX and T-Mobile announced a plan to deliver space to ground service to mobile phones in areas not covered by T-Mobile's cellular network. This week, SpaceX said that the company planned to start testing the satellite to cell service sometime this year. So it's coming guys, it's coming. This year, 2023, text messaging is expected to be the first supported service with voice and internet coverage to be added later. The FCC said yesterday that, quote, numerous such collaborations have launched recently and the FCC seeks to establish clear and transparent processes to support supplemental coverage from space. The FCC said yesterday that, quote, numerous such collaborations have launched recently and the FCC seeks to establish clear and transparent processes to support supplemental coverage from space. The FCC is seeking public comment on a plan to regulate these collaborations, providing more access to the spectrum needed to deliver the hybrid services using flexible use spectrum allocated to terrestrial service. So they're asking for the public public's comment on this. What do they think? What do you think we need to do or not do? They've already voted unanimously that they're doing something. 
that they're going to be able to release this flexible, let's say, spectrum. So this is fantastic because we see that the FCC is on board, number one. Number two, there's not only SpaceX, Starlink, and T-Mobile, this collaboration between them, but there's other parties that are collaborating already, according to what they're alluding to here. That is fantastic. So what we're gonna see is there's more of this underserved and unserved areas or people are going to have some type of internet. And if they don't have voice and data right away, they might just have some type of emergency service where texting is available when those satellites are flying overhead. Also, what I was talking about at the very beginning, I believe, is that what is going to happen with this when you're inside of a home, for example, or inside of a building, and there is no access to the satellites? Because remember, without having access to the satellites, it's just simply not going to work, right? You need to have that antenna outside. So I'm gonna guess that T-Mobile would probably work as a service indoors, and then once you're outdoors, if the SpaceX Starlink connection is faster or better or whatever, however it's determined, it might just switch over or however it does it. But my question is, what are they going to do with the problem with these phones being able to access the sky or not be able to access the sky? So what is going to happen with that? I think it's fascinating either way because what it does mean is even if there is a problem in an area where you do not have T-Mobile service because there is no ground stations, right? There is no cell towers near you. You'd be able to step outside and now use a satellite. What's great about this is years ago, you would have to have a satellite phone and they were like this big and you had like an uplink and all of these big antennas and all this stuff to be able to make a phone when you're in a rural area someplace and they cost a ton of money. Well, you're not gonna have to do that anymore. You're gonna be able to just use like a simple iPhone or whatever Android phone or smartphone that you use, whatever device, and that network will be connected to not only Starlink, but maybe other non-terrestrial networks, maybe OneWeb, right, or someone else that has a similar service. I know Apple is currently working with a company that I reported on a couple of months back where they're doing that also, where there is going to be that emergency service that they're going to use. So it's very small bits of data that's going to be able to be accessed from the phone using a satellite, which is great. But what Starlink is proposing here is far more than that. Yes, they're gonna start out with text, because that's the smallest packets, right? That makes sense. But then they're gonna move into voice and then they're gonna move into data. Incredible, absolutely incredible in my personal opinion. So I wanna know your thoughts on this. In the comment area below, let's have this discussion. If you enjoyed this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. I hope you appreciate all of my hard work here. If you wanna say thank you, there is a thank you button down there that you can click. If not, once again, that is fine. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. If you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com. There's a lot of awesome tools that I've created over the last 10 plus years for photography and videography. Check them out. If you like anything, pick it up and support the channel and support me. That'd be fantastic. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Take care.